Intro music. My name is James. And my name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. And James, today we review the projected 2021 Padre's real life playing roster. Did you say 2021? I just say 2021. That's happening. That's happening. We haven't had a like a, yeah. a, a, a mulligan again? No, no mulligan. Because that happened last year, if you went around. We all were super excited, and they're like, uh-uh, there's this thing called coronavirus. And yes. then we were like, baseball's gone forever. And it came back. So, yes. yeah, 2021 projected season lineup. We're going to go over what people are saying will be our lineup. Now, we delayed this episode a day, hoping that they'd actually announce the full lineup. But uh, they didn't. They did not. No, it, it's it's been a frustrating weekend just watching the Padres Twitter over and over again. Although Will Myers, if you haven't checked him out, is hysterical, but not very informative no. on the lineup. So a couple things before we get into it. This is all dependent on also last season that MLB made last second rule changes. And there is a sense that they might do that again either with expanded playoffs, but more importantly, with the DH. I would like to see, although I fully love that scene in Bald Durham, I think there should be a Constitution Amendment outlawing the DH. <laughs> I, I know, right? Great scene. I think that, uh, and I kind of agree with it, but I'd rather have a DH than an extended playoff because if I see the Marlins go to the playoffs again, who are one game of five, 500, I'm throwing something at somebody. Yeah. I agree. So that's all. We're going to caveat that because this could very well change. But I don't think there's going to be that much of changing. I think that we're down to two players in flux, I'd say, in the projected roster. It all depends on the DH, yes. Yes. So without much further ado, James, do you want want to look at the projected roster, James? Absolutely. I believe that's what the people are here for. So time for trivia, James, before we begin. All right, this is Joey's favorite game. Trivia. How our current 40-man roster, to which we have to pick 26 of them to be in the Major League squad. How more many of them? Sorry? More than half. Yeah, more than half. I can do math on the weekends. How many of them? What's, what do you think is a, is a largest category, come from the largest category of these categories? Are we, do you have more players that are homegrown? More players that are free agents, more players that are from trades, more player from waivers, or more players from the Rule 5 draft. Where do we get all these players from, James? Where do we get the most of these players from? So my answer might upset you. Yeah. I don't care. You know what? <laughs> this is a fun game. It is. All right. So that, well, it, I'll, I'll play along. I'll play okay. along. I'll play along. I'm going to say it's going to be a, the, the two highest ones are going to be homegrown and trades. Homegrown and free agent are tied for a second. Oh. Trade leads by 21. Oh. 21 of our players are traded. So all I'm trying to say is our farm system sucks. It just stinks. <laughs> like we all are like, oh, the Padres farm's the best. Not according to this. More than 50% of our team is from trades. Well, it's because we had a great farm system. Yeah, well, I don't want to. Now we have a great major league <laughs> ball club. I thought it was interesting. So let's get into it, James. So this is a projected uh, 26-man roster. Has henceforth in center field, Trent Grisham. Fantastic. Projected to be there. Because he's still a little sore. Right. Um, in right field, you have Mr. William Myers. Best hitter in spring training. In left field, we have a man named Tommy Pham. Thomas Famius. Not his real name. I talk, no, <laughs> no, I think that's probably insulting in some way. No, Tom, Tommy Pham, we've talked about him, Agnosium last time. He gets on base. Yeah. In third base, there's a man by the name of El Ministro El Defensa. Do not correct my Spanish. <laughs> Also known as Manny Machado. 
All right. You've heard of him? I vaguely heard of him. I believe he was in the top 20 best players in baseball. Yeah, something like that. Shortstop, we have our boy, Khalil Green. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm kidding. (laughs) We have, of course, Fernando Tatis Jr. as shortstop. As second base, James, we have the real steal of the Tommy Pham trade, Jake Cronenworth. First base, we have four-time gold glover, Eric Husmer. Yes. And rounding up what is believed to be the starting... I'm naming, obviously, the starting position players that we perceive to be the most, take the most of starts. Um, And as catcher, we have what's perceived to be now, before Austin Nola, Victor Caratini. Yes. Which makes sense. He has the most major league... um, at bats, he's not that bad of a hitter. Right. He's he's a switch hitter, so he gives you some versatility at the at the plate, and he's a pretty good defensive player. Yeah, he is. You uh, Darvish's private catcher, so every time you Darvish is up there, he'll get a Carantini catcher. Rounding out the bench, we have our second catcher, our prospect, Luis Capasano. Yes. We have his parents named him after a coffee drink, I believe. After a what? Co- you know, cappuccino. Ugh. I can't make. It was funnier when he made fun of Cool Green. I t- <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay. So, uh, from the KBO, freshly signed Ha Sung Kim, also on our bench. Jerks international and- superstar. International superstar. Uh, Looking better and better in spring training. Very, yes. I'm very impressed by how he's turning around, catch up to fastballs. So, except for when they put him in outfield, he looks like a lost puppy. He's just working it out. He's just working it out. <laughs> you know, he's trying something new. Um, Jerickson Profar is also on the bench, also re-signed, and according to Fangraphs, projecting Jorge Mateo also on the bench. For the rotation, James, we have you Darvish. Fairly decent. Blake Snell. Did pretty good the other day. Joe Musgrove. Homeboy. Chris Paddock. Has shown great improvement over the spring training. Adrian Morihon. This kid will have a Cy Young in his career. Wow, hot take. (laughs) Hot take. That rounds up the starting rotation, James. And the bullpen, once again, this is projected. This is not finalized. And this is projected by a bunch of nerds that have never played the sport. Hey, that's not true. I can't verify that fact, but <laughs> don't make me find go on the Fangraphs editor board and find out who, <laughs> who, actually, who actually is in charge of Fangraphs. <laughs> Drew Pomeranz, our perceived closer, had forearm tightness but got better. He had a little outing after forearm tightness and he looked great. Yes. Emilio Pagan. Let me say that again. Emilio Pagan, not Emilio Pagan, as people say on the internet all the time. Uh, Mark Mark Melanson. Mark Melanson is good. He's a good guy, I I hear. (laughs) (laughs) Pierce Johnson. Pierce Brosnan's son. A lot of people don't know that. (laughs) Uh, Kiana Kella. Tim Hill. Dan Altavilla. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to say Tim Hill? And not say that he's part of our alma mater? Yeah, I mean, you've done <laughs> that. I think the fans expected this point. Yeah, he's... Every time Tim Hill is mentioned, we have to pick up the fact that he went to Palomar College. Yeah, our alma mater. Our alma mater, yes. <laughs> Don Altavilla. Craig Stanman. Consistent play. Consistent, consistent pitcher. Consistent. Definitely last year. I I mean I was talking to you earlier. I rewatched the um, wild card series against the Cardinals, and I forgot Craig Salmon started Game Three, and he did a pretty good job. It was his first start in like what eleven years. <laughs> Bananas, and then also projected line, uh, bullpen is Taylor Williams James. That after I don't know how long it took me to do that is the projected roster. James, do you think this is actually the final roster? One, as we said in the beginning, it all depends on what's the weird rule they're going to say. I personally think if they're going to drop a DH rule, 
last minute they should give us a 27 man roster. You want the 27? Yes. Okay. Just because if you're going to make this all the teams last minute switch around all of their lineups. Mm -hmm. And it's not like we've uh, baseball hasn't gone to a higher man roster before. At one point, there used to be a 28 man roster. Yes. So add another. If you're going to say, okay, um, DH is the rule, you get 27 players. Right. So there's a couple. I think that like that's a fair assessment of what they projected the lineup is. I think based on a couple things that it's not going to end up being that bullpen. Um, so let's just go into it like positional, like the question marks in the roster. The big thing is the rotation is lined up currently projected to be a five person rotation. They've hinted at being a six, six man rotation. They've said six man rotation constantly since the end of last year yeah every team has said it yes no one's formalized it and i just i think as someone um i saw the yankees like the first one that f- probably formalized what they're thinking is they're gonna end of april they're gonna implement the six man and that makes sense for us too because lament should be back by then and we want to keep that kid healthy uh, so it's I could see that happening for the Padres where if this is the five we roll out for three, um, four, four times, and then bring in a six person. Yes. Um, which is interesting because I think we also have to consider... It's going to be interesting because I, I think there's a world where Taylor Williams uh, just doesn't... I think Ryan Weathers replaces Taylor Williams because he can be a long man. He's proven to be a competitor. He can be a starter. He could be like a, what Matt Strom was last year and the year before, which is he can take on three or four innings. And like that's what Morahone was used last year, right? Like Morahone came in for three or four innings. I think that's a, you don't really have that in the bullpen currently. Qu- question because. I can't remember. Taylor Williams is a right-hander, right? Yeah. I just think Ryan Weathers is far more versatile as a left-handed. Yeah. I, I think so, too. I think it's... I think The only time world. that being a left-hander is any kind of useful to society if you're a baseball player. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're being so rude on this podcast. You're kind of pretty rude. There's many rude jokes so far. <laughs> um... <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a little odd that Fangraphs project Taylor Williams over Austin Adams even. So I, Austin Adams has been dominant. I, I don't know. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if Donald Tavilla and Taylor Williams are knocked off and it's Austin Adams, Ryan Weathers replaced them. So once again, I've already brought this up. Fangraph is brought to you by a bunch of nerds. They have the right way to look at it, though. I'm looking at all this info. Look at all this info they have. Yes. Do you think an athlete could deal with info? That's a joke. They could deal with info. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's. I think the reason why they're doing this is because the Padres have. Uh, we're talking about because they haven't told us. The rest of these guys are obvious going to camp. You don't sign Kanakella, Mark Melanson, and be like, "You're not going to be part of the major league roster, right?" Craig Salmon is just that guy that's always around. Tim Hill is like. The only lefty not named Drew Pomerant that we trust in our whole like yeah, exactly. potential. Well, Emilio Pagan has a pro- can be an incredible re- uh, closer, so it is kind of like us. The Potters give us something, just yeah, give exactly. us something, Jace Tingler. Well, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, like you said, Salmon is definitely you need one of those guys in your bullpen. He's a long reliever. Somebody's not doing well, and they need to be taken out second or third inning. You put him in for three innings. And so he's yeah. definitely going to be in the bullpen. You know, Pagan, that guy's lights out. And like you said, Adams, he struck Austin out. Adams. Austin Adams um, just dominated Goldsmith. In the playoffs, yeah. yeah. I, I, think he, I think he becomes, I think he's part of the picture. Part of the picture. And for those of you that don't know, Goldsmith is one of the more pesky hitters against the Padres the last decade. I mean, he. I also forgot. Was it in the second game? 
Trevor Rosenthal comes in, throws a hundred mile an hour fastball above the zone, and Goldschmidt just like pokes it as a home run. Like this is unfair. It's, it's the like, guy just loves Padre hitting, and anytime you can have somebody that can shut him down, they're like. Sign him for a bigger contract, please. Ridiculous. Facing the Cardinals is going to be awful. Arenado and Goldschmidt in that lineup, they just hate us. Like They have this hatred towards the Padres. Like, ah, it's going to be bad. But, well, unfortunately, as we know, it, it's they aren't real stars. They're not real stars? They're, the stars on that team is all around their catcher. No, that's right. It's the St. Louis Yadier Molinas, as, as we all know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's what uh, Rick Sutcliffe said during the playoffs. <laughs> I think that's the big one. I, I think I think we see these two people get switched out. I think we see Weathers and Adams. And what's interesting about kind of what going forward is if we go to six man with Lamette coming back, that's kind of like the other question mark is when Lamette comes back, does Morahone get shifted back to the bullpen or does he become, oh, is it a true six person? Because it could very well be there's a lot of questions. I want I want to know kind of what the season is like because I don't I think we're gonna know sooner rather than later if they're gonna six person and stick to it because I think the strength and conditioning people are gonna be like oh people are exhausted they're yes. gonna know it's pretty early on like you're not used to pitching you know four times in twenty days especially by the third month because that's as long as last year oh, lasted yeah. Yeah. was they're like oh yeah you, you're not used to pitching this much and this much workload but. I could see Morahone and Paddock being like a duo, like an opener. Mid, there's no term for this. The mid mid guy, the long guy in the middle, middle reliever. Yeah, I could see that, right? You because you force people to turn up the line, turn the lineup over. If you want to stick to a true five person, uh, five person rotation, you have then to do it. I could the, feel like that could that would work, right? You have to do what the Rays do, no more than six innings, right? So. I'm interested to see that because once Lamette come back, we have another problem, which is like, do we kick? And baseball's baseball finds a way. You know, bullpen people, if you stink, you just stink quickly and you get knocked down. Just exactly. And if more Hone and Paddock come out and they're just tearing it up, they're staying in the lineup. We're just going to yep. keep a six man rotation. Yep. That's kind of like the only. Uh, there's no flex. There's no question. Lamette's. Lamette, like once Lamette's back, he's in the rotation. There's not, yeah, there's, there's not, no. <laughs> he's not going to be a, this current season. He's not going to be a relief pitcher. No way. No, you don't get Cy Young votes and be put in the bullpen. So the other um, question marks, James, um, is going to be the catcher position. So it's not so much a cut question mark because we know what's happening. It's just Austin Nola is hurt, and. Until then, we have Carantina and Capizano. And I'm fine with that. Here's what I'm interested. What happens if Camposano, like, Camposano has legit hit power, like, hit tools. And he's, he's, he's predicted to be a good catcher, hitting catcher. What happens if he's just, like, raking, just destroying pitching? Then he platoons with the other two. And come the trade deadline. This is this is your problem. You always want to ship people away. I'm not. I'm just saying. A good hitting catcher like Austin Nola. If we have, if if let's just say. Capizano has, a Benito Santiago rookie year, which was the best rookie offensive year any catcher has ever had. Yeah, you, you're not gonna. You can't get rid of Carantini because he's. A part of Darvish. You can't get rid of... I love Nola. I want him to be a Padre for a long time. But he's too good of an athlete and or a player to be benched. Yeah. I don't know. You're probably right. I just... I just interesting because I think he's... He's really is viewed very highly by the organization. Or or we might actually trade Capazano for Christian Yelich. Wow, there it is. <laughs> Brewers aren't going to make that trade. But. <laughs> no, <laughs> they aren't. Well, it all depends. We don't know how bad the Brewers are going to be true. this year. That's true. So, moving to the position players, the real athletes on the field. I, <laughs> I Let the record show, 
I've not been the mean one this episode. <laughs> I don't. They have, people don't know who you and I are. They have no idea. They can't tell the difference. <laughs> okay. They can't tell the difference. <laughs> so, um, the position players, position flexibility slash questions we have are once again dependent upon the DH, but mostly centered around second base and left field, James. And a little bit center field of Trent Grisham is to start. Yes. So that's, a, I guess, a, a real qu- the real question mark, I guess, is center field on opening day. Because our boy Jace Tingler, manager of the San Diego Padres, yes. second year manager, has said, oh, I like Chucapito Marcano a lot, who has played three positions on the infield, and one position in the outfield in his minor league career and spring training started a game in center field. So that's flexibility. That is flexibility. He I, is. The, the, que- the question is, how good was he in the outfield? I mean, how good do you have to be? It's just like the ball's in the air, you just catch it with a glove. How hard is it? I mean, center field is the most <laughs> rigorous position on the diamond. But does it matter if you're hitting 417 batting average, 500 on base percentage, 667 slugging, which is a 1.167 OPS, James? Yeah, it does matter, I guess. It, it does matter. It, it still if, matters. If <laughs> every time a ball goes to him, they get on base. Yeah, he's been destroying the spring. Just There's no other way around it. He's been really destroying the spring. Well, I think that settles it. He's definitely going to be the center fielder. Or at the very least, a bench... I think I think if the question is Jorge Mateo, like this Jorge Mateo gets knocked off, I think he does. I think Jorge Mateo gets. Well, I don't know because here's the interesting thing: Kim can go to the minor leagues. I thought his contract he had to start the season. So that's what the contract says. But both Kim and management has said, "Oh, he's okay with starting the." So if Kim is, so he saw a couple of major league baseball pitchers and went. I could probably take a few more warm-ups. Yeah, it really is. His biggest struggle is catch up at night by like high heat. And he is catching up to him now, which yes. is awesome. I mean, it just shows how freak of an athlete he is. So if he gets sent down, let's say he gets a month in El Paso and just like destroys that, you know, um, the Chihuahuas. And I could see Mateo and Mark Cano being on because Mark Marcano can play shortstop two and second base and center field. So he can make up for what the, what Kim will be playing to. Yeah. I am not worried whatsoever about our infield. We have so much depth in our infield oh, yeah. and so much talent in our infield. It's our outfield that might not be as much power and depth. And that's the, and again, it all hinges on whether Grisham is healthy or not. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, We'll have to see if Trent Grisham's hurt. I think that I, I, if I guess if Trent Grisham's hurt, then yeah, I think Marcano comes up. And Trent Grisham has been taking batting practice. He's been yeah taking practice in the outfield. They have not finalized the lineup, and they're playing the second to the last spring training game today. Yep. So I'm okay with. I'm. I'm not. I'm not mad about it. I'm, I will miss Trent Grisham on. On opening day, for sure. But I think it's a fine option to throw Marcano in. Especially because that's what baseball's about. Like, if you prove yourself at spring training, you get the call-up. That's just the way it works, you know? That's exactly. It. It's a result-oriented business, as Don Arcelo says. Well, well, last year we had that kid that proved himself in spring training. Or two years ago, he proved himself in spring training. Is, it, is he his long blonde hair? He dove at balls and short stuff? Well, I know they put him on the cover of a sports game. For the for the video arcade, you didn't take my Cleo Green bit bit bait. I'm I know um, I'm not going to go down that route again because you're an idiot. So yeah, so we'll see about. We love you, Khalil Green. Come on our podcast. He's not going to come on our podcast. I think it's. I think I'd be surprised if Grisham doesn't start opening day. I think he probably is starts opening day. I'd be, I mean, I, I think he's a he's a tough guy, but I don't know. Maybe the Padres are going to be like, hey, if you're if you even feel like one inkling of you're going to be hurt again, don't do it. So, yeah, it's a long season. 
were not playing particularly good teams the first week. What do you mean? I, I know we were going to do this at the end, but if the Padres aren't 7-0 and or 6-1 and the first seven games of the year, I, I, I'm going to be a little upset. 5-2, and two, okay. But anything less than that, no. We're, we're playing two teams in rebuild. It just... We're going to be okay. Wow. I think you're right. I just, I think that both those teams are pretty pesky. Can be pesky. But I, yeah, we'll, we'll go to it in the end. Pesky is what you call teams that aren't very good. <laughs> the Padres have been pesky for years. <laughs> I believe we were called the pesky Padres for a few years. So, James, that rounds up all of our, um, what we think of the projected roster. Any other comments about the projected roster? Any, any worried? Anything you're worried about with our roster, James? No, I think I, I have the the amount of talent we have on our team. I'm not worried about us winning games. Defensively, in the outfield, might be a little iffy for the first couple of weeks, but I'm not worried too badly about it. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, again, it all depends on what rules they're going to change. Yeah, if the DH comes, we're just going to destroy the the Major League Baseball. It's yeah. If no. a DH, if we have a DH, this is this is an absurd lineup. And and here's it already the, is an absurd lineup. But and here's the thing, we can even have a good pit hitting pitcher. <laughs> we, so we can have a really great defensive player. Yeah. I mean, Blake Snell took his first at bat ever last year, <laughs> uh, ever this spring. <laughs> And he might just want to keep being a hitter. <laughs> if you okay. haven't seen it, go online and look at Blake Snell at bat. The the look on his face is... It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. It literally looks like, you know, <laughs> they're giving a tennis player, hey, go play hockey. He's like, <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. What do I do? That's awesome. So, James... What are your uh what are your kind of uh those weren't words. Sorry? Those weren't any words that I recognized. No, I got distracted by my own notes. <laughs> my own words distracted my brain from reading. Um It's the weekend, we know this. What is your kind of Do you think this roster stays this way? What's the big what's the biggest shuffle you find? Because every every roster has shuffling at the end of the year. There's like good players rise up, players you thought you were good aren't that good anymore. What do you think is like going to be the biggest shuffle? It all depends on how the question marks do. If Capizano turns out to be as good of a stud as he's been promised, things are going to shuffle around. We're going to have to deal a few players. I don't or move people down my, uh, my legs. If um, his name just escaped me, the kid that's going to the outfield, Marcano. Marcano is a stud, right? Obviously, he's going to get uh, more starts in left field and center field. So I think it all depends. We know who the set players are, right? We know, and thing is, even Cronenworth's a question mark. Because it is his second year, and traditionally... A sophomore slump. Yeah, it's a sophomore slump. So I'm not going to say it's going to happen to him, but it, it happened a little bit. To, it happens a little bit to most people. The end of last year, Tati started struggling because you started to see um, pitchers throwing at, him, throwing at his head, trying to get him off his feet. And he adjusted and had a really good offense, um, playoffs. Right. So you'll you see that. But even at second base, we have Profar. We, and Profar can play the outfield very well. Yeah. Totally Profar could be that. left I'm field, not, second base, or first base. I'm not worried about the outfield because I forgot about Profar. So it all depends on who's doing well and who's hurt. So right now we know Machado, Tatis, Hosmer, Myers, Grisham, Nola, Capasano, and um, Carantini are all going to be catchers. Right. And again, if one of those core players doesn't have the best career, best years, 
or gets hurt, we have enough people playing it. So it's hard to predict the end of the year because of that factor. It, I think the biggest factor has to do with, because I think all of our guys are young enough, they can pull, pull out a whole season, is who pops, who's having a great year. And you know right. one of those guys is going to have a great year. Right. I agree. Uh, I think and since I have a Capazano rookie, rookie card, <laughs> I, I don't want it to be him. I think that because I'm like kind of a, I want I like when things get weird in baseball. Who do you th- who who James? Do you know who our backup catcher is after uh, Caratini and Capasano is? I, I do not. It's your boy Will Myers. So I'm not saying I want to see Will Myers as a catcher. But listen, he's a third baseman already. He's been a center fielder, has, first base. Has he ever played a catcher in Major League Baseball? I don't think so. That's a good question. But why is he listed as a catcher? Oh, because he came up as a catcher. Well, I know that, but why is he listed as a emergency catcher? Emergency catcher should never be used. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, why is he listed as a catcher? He should, that should be His rookie up. card has him as a... Uh, uh, yeah, so as... It was drafted by Kansas City Royals as a catcher. I don't think he's played it at all. In... Yeah. Trevor Hoffman was drafted as a shortstop. You know yeah. who never covered the 5.5 hole? Trevor Hoffman. I don't know, man. I'm just saying. Maybe one day he'll just be up there. Like, I, I think it'd be fun. I, I think I think what we need to do in baseball is goofy stuff always happens to bad teams. No. Let good teams do goofy stuff, you know? Let Bill Myers play all nine positions. No. Be 20 games ahead of... <laughs> I'm going to hit the table. No. 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 It's entertainment. Here's the thing. It's entertainment. Myers, Myers is in such a good mental place right now. Myers has the biggest potential to be just an... Ab- he, out of all of our players, I think he has the best chance of being a 40 home run guy. He won't be our best hitter, but he'll probably have the most home runs by the end of the year. That's my projection. And he's doing that because he's in a good headspace. He likes where he's at. He's not the center of the universe of the Tomadres. You're wrong. Hey, uh, you're, you're, you have crossed the proverbial line. Uh, apologize. I, I don't think. Apologize. I don't. <laughs> It was a joke. I was a joke fit. The fit was a joke. I don't think he should be catcher. I just think that it'd be fun if he was. That's all. Wow. <laughs> Note to self. Don't have funny bits. <laughs> Note to self. Just don't mess with Myers, man. <laughs> so James, I've always of... I've always been a Will Myers fan. I've always yeah. saw the potential. Last year I really saw it. Yeah. No, it's not. It's just, I, yeah, if, if Potter is, if, if Will Myers is catcher, it means that like our catchers were murdered that day. We've given up on life. But I don't know. Wouldn't it be fun if like the ninth inning of a 15 nothing game, Potter's are winning 15 nothing? Chase is like, yeah, M- Manny, and, Manny and Will Myers switch around. Manny, you play right field. Will Myers, you play third base. Will Myers was a terrible third baseman. But let's have some fun. <laughs> Come on! Why do all the bad teams have fun? You know, like they all the bad teams all do goofy stuff. The bad like teams have to figure things out. Why can't Cronenworth like once in a while pitch? I mean, immediately he had a good ERA in college. Why? Why? Can't, why can't Tatis? He throws ninety miles now to the first base. All right, how come Tatis can't play in the outfield? <laughs> yeah, well, Let's dig that up again. Well, it's not for the, for the sake of being goofy. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, let's have some fun. I like, don't I don't know. I don't want to be goofy. <laughs> We've had plenty of goofy teams. We've had plenty of teams where it's like, <laughs> yes, as for those of you who don't remember, we used to have a player named Archie Sanfraco. Mm-hmm. He wasn't really that good of a hitter. His claim to fame was he spit in his helmet before he went to bat. But he is the only player in major league baseball history to play all nine positions in one game. And that wasn't because we were being goofy. It's because we were getting our butts kicked. And our manager is literally throwing everything up against the wall. I don't know, man. It's fun, though. I want that to happen. I want, I want us to do that and win the game. I, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Bring Goofy back. Bring back fun. 
Make baseball says, goofy again? <laughs> it never was goofy. No, it was goofy. <laughs> so, James, that rounds up our discussion about the 26-man roster. All subject to change, of course. Tomorrow, Jason Tingler is going to be like, actually, these five people we never heard of are going to be in America. Well, exactly. Got to re-record baseball, this episode again. <laughs> Major Baseball, we're starting off with a 30-man roster. <laughs> like, well, fine. Exciting stuff, James, of course, because Thursday is open day. We are looking forward to that. We'll be recording an episode that day. Uh-huh. And instant reactions, instant hot takes, instant dire warnings. We're going to predict the whole season after one game. <laughs> <laughs> like all good baseball <laughs> analysts should. <laughs> We're excited for that, James. Facing the Arizona Diamondbacks on April first, and they have announced it is going to be Madison Bumgardner who is going to be taking the mound. And for those you're thinking, huh, wasn't he a good pitcher a decade ago? Like six years ago, he was a good four years ago. And I'm frantically looking up his stats to see. What Wasn't he, was. he a good pitcher when Obama was president? And like, know. yes. He was a good pitcher in multiple presidents. He was a good pitcher when multiple presidents. I can't. I don't know. What Still means he was a good player a long time ago. Listen, listen. He was good. In 2019, a 3-9 year array. Game start. That's pretty good. ERA plus of 108. So you brought up a stat. This is the third straight year in a row. Where the Padres opening day, we faced Madison Bumgarner. Correct. Fun fact, we've won the other, two, the other games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How weird is that? You think Mad Bum gets mad about that? Like, do I have to face, can I face another team, please? Can I, I'm just done. I'm done. He signed with the Diamondbacks. We yeah. didn't make... So, he, he, he stayed in the West Coast. He could have gone to the East Coast. I'm pretty sure the Marlins would have would have taken him. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little prediction, open day prediction. You ready for this, James? Okay. Potter's gonna win. Wow, hot take. But I think Potter's gonna win, and I think it's gonna be like the last time we faced Mad Bum, which is if you're a soft tossing lefty, you're not gonna have a good time against San Diego Potter. No, not at you're all. Not gonna have a good time. I we talked about a little bit of a lineup. I think the lineup switches a little bit, much like we did in 2020, where either it's just so tough without we don't know the DH rule, but I don't think Grisham leads off. I think Fam leads off against lefties. Because what does that movie tell us? He gets on base. He gets on base. He gets on base. <laughs> but Matt, like I just think Grisham, Tatis, Machado, one, two, three, four against Mad Bum. And then I think I think Hosmer and Myers switch. I think Ho- Myers is number four. I think Hosmer is number six. That makes sense. I think Grisham's maybe seven or flip down, make Cronenworth seven. I I, I think it's going to be pretty bad. Regardless, I think we're going to win. Yeah. My outlandish hot take. <laughs> we're going to score no fewer than eight runs. Wow. That's a very... So that was, my hot take was just very homerish. And Hugh Darvish yeah. will pitch the first ever... Opening day and first ever in Padre history, no hitter. That's not a good prediction, but no. But <laughs> how awesome would that be? <laughs> yeah, I, it's gonna be fun to see you, Darvish. It's gonna be fun to see. I'm just so excited for baseball, man. I really am. I'm just it's, so it's excited. So... It's <laughs> just 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 joy to yeah, have it's, baseball back. It's, it's like it's. Today in San Diego, it's like the first like warm day in a long time. And it's just like, oh, spring is here. We've melted away all the darkness of winter. For like, all of our North Hemisphere fans, it's the first warm day we've had in a week. Listen, <laughs> Last week, it was it all feels, warm. It feels so symbolic. It does right? feel symbolic. Last week, spring has a Spring cold. has been sprung. Open day. Baseball's back. We're going to see... Meaningful baseball, not baseball games in which a person can do bad and then get replaced and then come back in the next inning for some weird reason. <laughs> so, happy to see that. And James, I'm just excited for baseball, man. I'm just excited. We, we, we do have to talk about that one rule change. Yeah, I was going to say, part of what's... Excitement has gotta be, always got to be metered because Major League Baseball is always trying to fix itself. Yes. That's what we talked about. 
that Robbie Manfred, old Bobby, always trying to speed up the game, James. The kids don't like slow games, James. And what's better thing to slow down the game than sticky substances? Sticky, sticky so- substances. We are not going to make the sticky pun that everybody in, in <laughs> media has been doing it, has, but they are cracking down on a sticky substance <laughs> because, as I have said in the past, Trevor Bauer is an awful human being. <laughs> wow. A living, breathing internet troll, and it's all his fault. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. I, I hate I hate being on the side of, of Trevor Bauer, but he... He uh, he's been saying this has been a problem for a long time, and he obviously does it now. He obviously uses sticky substances now. Well, no, he's openly admits he uses yeah. sticky substances because he says, "Hey, look, everyone else is doing yeah, it." Yeah, Garrett Cole, the player whom I hate. Yeah, I want to know what happened in that dorm room. What happened to make those not good stuff? So, not I mean, good at all. If, I mean, if you could be a fly on the wall. Yeah. Of any gringy dorm room. Something happened between those two to make them hate each other so much. And he's like, okay, if Garrett Cole can sign a huge contract for you cheating. And he openly admits he's cheating. And I think really that's why Major League Baseball is like, well, we're all, we all know they use it. But okay. Uh, I think it's actually... I think it's better. So we talked about this a little bit beforehand. There's a new ball in play. Absolutely. They made a ball with a deeper groove that helps you pitchers get a better um, grip on it and gives you a better spin rate. Right. So I think that was their compromise. Look, we're going to give you a better ball to throw. Quit putting pine tar and Coca-Cola on your hands. And what's interesting to me is there's there's a discussion on Twitter about between hitters and pitchers about this. And hit, basically what it came down to is hitters don't mind – if you use something to grip the ball better, what they mind is, is a thing that helps you grip also increases spin by 400, 300, 300 RPMs. Yes. Right? It's just like it, no one wants a 100 mile an hour fastball that's random that could, that could hit you in the head. No one wants that. So, yeah, use some rosin or whatever. But then you add stuff that actually increases drag and increases spin. That's two separate things, then, right? That, that's the people, that's what some hitters were saying on Twitter. It's like, you know, let's, let's have. But give you let's find a substance that lets you grip the ball better, but also then increase drag. Much like pine tar. Someone exactly. said exactly. It's like this, hey, yeah. batters are allowed to use pine tar. Right. Can you just have a little pine tar rag out there for the pitchers too? It makes sense. Yeah. But it's the higher. The, what's his name? The guy from the Angels organization that was banned from baseball because he was selling his patented sticky substance. Oh, his thing was he was he was making the substances. Yes. He was making said sticky substance. And he was selling it to pitchers all around the league. Yeah. I, what this means for the Padres is either Bauer is worse. The Padres, I think the people speculate the Padres that are doing it might be, um, might be Joe Musgrove, might be uh, relief pitchers. Just because this is, none of this is, I, I'm not accusing anyone of anything. What I'm yeah. saying is it's just based on data of like, oh, you have spikes in, spikes in um, RPM in your, in your breaking pitches. All this is to say, like, this is, this is how Major League Baseball is going to look at data and say, oh, you, we assume based on data or if we catch you in the act of adding like rock, you know, spin right stuff, like spin stuff, sticky substances, that's the word I'm looking for. Then they're gonna they're gonna say you're cheating. So what's happening now is people are like, well, look at all these pitchers that have all this uptick and spin. It doesn't really mean anything. So it could mean the Padres players just like like I said, everyone in the league has been do, is assumed to be doing this. Yes. And Major League Baseball has been super lax about it. And it wasn't. Trevor until- Bauer has been like, why is Major League Baseball lax about it? And he's like, screw it, I'm gonna do it then. And I'm just gonna talk about doing it then. And that's what made Major League Baseball went, okay, now we have to... In, from from perspective, Bowers, Bauer is the best person in this because he just signed a big old deal. If he gets a post... If he chose a 17 ERA for three years in a row, he doesn't care. He no. doesn't want that. But, like, he doesn't... He's made a bunch of money. Garrett Cole would want that. Yeah, that deal might look... If this, if this really does... If they clamp down... And it's 
it does decrease people like Cole's fastball and breaking pitches by 300 RPM. Dude, that that deal looks real bad. Because Garrett Cole was a moderate pitcher up until... He went to Houston Astros. Yeah. And and <laughs> I know what you're implying. <laughs> I, don't I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever heard anything bad about the Houston Astros. I don't know anything. Pitchers cheating. Is that a dump truck out there? Trash cans? Oh, where, 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 where? What do you... Just pay attention to the... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so yes, the the Houston Astros have been known to do a few, let's say, shady things. Yes. So yeah, I, I of course they put resin on their hands. Of course, there's no other. And what's his name? Um, God, Vander. Um, geez, why can't I remember anybody's names today? Uh, great pitcher from the Astros. Zach Granke? Justin, Justin Verlander. Justin Verlander, yes. Yeah. Uh, he has in, uh, spin rate increased as well. Yeah, I, I don't... There's a good chance that we see a lot of pitchers on both the Padres and other teams just be not as good. Oh, yeah. that's. But again, that's. I think that's what Major League Baseball was hoping yeah. by changing the grooves of the baseball. Right. Now, that might work, but unfortunately, because you have to practice something for $10,000 to get used to it, right? IRAs are definitely going to go up this year. Next year, once pitchers have started to get to know the ball and how to use it better, you're going to see them go back down. Obviously, the better pitchers and the better athletes and the smarter guys will know how to gro- do right. it correctly already, but we're going to see... It's going to be an interesting thing to happen. Yeah, I- I'm interested to see what... Here's what I don't want to have happen. I don't want MLB to say this and then no one gets caught. Because there's... You don't... Like, you can... If an average fan can catch someone doing this, like, there's multiple videos of guys applying, like, Pelican wax grip in, in, like, dugouts. Oh, I know. And there's, like, there's multiple clips of... And if you look on, you know, spin rate over the years on pitchers, and you just see, oh, all of a sudden this guy who's been a lifetime athlete for 20-something years, suddenly found 500 RPM more in his curveball. He doesn't happen. I forgot this one grip. No, you, you never tried that grip before, dude? You know, never should no, you Your did. job is to throw a ball, and you've not tried every way you can to make that better. The Major League Baseball commissioner is super tough because didn't all of the Astros get suspended for life? <laughs> oh, no, they all got a slight slap on the wrist and said you could go back to play in a game <laughs> in which you cheated <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, so yeah. So this is just a calm, like, okay, we'll acknowledge you're doing it. Here's a little, here's a slight shot across the bow. Not even a real shot across the bow. We're gonna tell you you're gonna shoot across the bow, but not gonna do anything about it. I yeah. think, yeah, they, they're gonna have, they're gonna have to start enforcing it somehow. You know, this is. I swear, Trevor Bauer did not live rent, rent free in my head, but this is how I think it's gonna go down. Okay. Trevor Bauer, he's the one that's going to catch everybody. He's just like MLB Batman, where like he'll go into dugouts. He'll have, he's always vlogging, right? It's like a psyop. Like this is like a this is like Major League Baseball is paying Bauer to do this. So he'll go into dugouts. He'll have his vlogging camera all around, and he'll catch everybody. That's how they're going to do it. Because he's a living troll. <laughs> uh, I, I think Trevor Bauer, weirdly enough, looks the best in this. And that sounds weird, but he really does. Because he's been blowing this whistle for so long. For at least four years now. Yeah. Ever since it came up, he's been talking about it. Yeah. And so I think he weird, he's the one, like, you know who doesn't look good in all this? Like you said earlier, Trevor, like uh, Garrett Cole. If Garrett Cole's caught doing it, dude, Trevor Bauer is going to love it. He's going to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. My arch nemesis from the UCLA Bruins. Yeah, my, my former roommate that clearly was doing something naughty with something. I don't know. Uh, just yeah, he'll look bad. But I, I mean, I don't but know. But no, Trevor Bauer. It was some petty something that happened. Like he ate his ice cream. It had to be. It had, had to be been something so minute for that guy to be so irritated. Yeah, I, I also I I want to caveat too. I am not saying specifically Joe Musgrove is doing this. I just know that he is on. He's on the the 
The players we, whose spin rate has high, been. like a very efficient spin rate, very good spin rate, and that's now what Major League Baseball said we're going to look at track men spin rate data to try to catch it. So now, of course, every fan can do the same thing and be like, who has high spin rate? And then, oh, then we immediately make the assumption. That's not probably not a fair thing to do. But that's what Major League Baseball said they're going to do. They're going to track spin rate after the fact and monitor dugouts with cameras and see if anyone's doing it. So Again, it's like what people did with the Astros. Every, there's how many YouTube videos? Uh, there's some baseball fan going, look, this is their batting average at home. This is their batting average away from right. home. This is Octube. On a Hall of Fame projected career, yeah. now he looks sort of like a oh, a middling second baseman, you know? It, 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 these, are, these are things that anyone could do. Look at these stats. Right. Since John Boy has made it profitable to do this. Yeah. Love John Boy. Come on our podcast. <laughs> um, everyone's doing this now. Everyone's making it. There's so many clips of banging trash cans. Yeah. There's going to be so many people analyzing every spin rate of every pitcher now from time on memoriam. Yeah, I, that's a probably a good point. I think there will be a plenty of like... That's what happened last year. I think it was Lance... I'm, gonna, I'm not going gonna, gonna to call anyone more pitchers out. There's a pitcher, his pitching in the Oakland... Um, whatever the big stadium is. What's the Oakland Athletics? What do they play? The what Coliseum. Is, the Coliseum. Not the Coliseum. Not the Col- Col- Coliseum. They used to play. No, I, I think you're. Oh, it is Coliseum. They used to play at Candlestick Park. No, that was the Giants that used to play at Candlestick Park. Listen, my knowledge of the Bay Area stadiums are obviously very bad. So I've been to <laughs> one Bay Area stadium. I, I do and know it was Candlestick Park. <laughs> and so I'm like, I know exactly where that is. Oakland Athletics Stadium. Um, a team was playing the Oakland Athletics, and there's like, there's this a, a crowdsourced clip of a guy just spraying down his arm. With this mixture of stuff, and that's—I think you're probably right. That's actually—they're probably going to see a bunch of people like at MLB on Twitter and be like, "Hey, MLB, what are you going to plant this down?" I, I'm just what's what's going to break my heart if there's like a Padres pitcher that just regresses. That's just like, oh man. And then uh, presumably though, that they've already been making the changes in spring training. This is this is my counter to this. Yeah. It's going to break my heart too, but there is going to be a, it has to be law of averages, how many players are doing it. But that's also going to mean hitters are going to be better. Oh yeah. I don't know if you know this, but our (laughs) team has a few good hitters. And if pitchers start throwing, you know, poop up there, they're going to start hitting home runs better. So it's going to bounce out. Maybe we have a higher ERA of his team, but we're definitely going to have a better batting average. Yeah, that's fair. James, baseball's back on Thursday. Yay! We're excited for it, James. We're going to do a bunch of stuff. We're going to do once a week. We're going to recap every week. Um, starting we're going to recap the previous week. How, what's different than what I said? <laughs> you said recap this week. You said recap every week. Yeah. How can I recap the week that's already going to, it hasn't happened yet? But I'm recapping the week that did happen. But the the correct way to say that is previous week. I don't know. I'm not an English major. (laughs) Regardless, every week we're going to recap the previous week weekly. Is that that, that a good way to say it? (laughs) (laughs) So on Thursdays we're going to record, look back, and look forward. Have predictions about what we think is going to have happen, and look back at what things that did happen. Yes. Very excited starting with opening day on Thursday. We're going to be back on opening day. We're going to do a... We're going to give it a few seconds after the game, and then we're going to record. Yeah. The game's going to be fresh in our minds. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're still going to have chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to it. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Um, look forward to this season 2021. Remember to follow us on all the associated podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts. I almost said Google, Spotify. Just Spotify. Uh, YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you'd like us, remember to follow us on Twitter at Brothers Padre. Happy 2021, guys. Go Padres. Go Padres. And there it is. Ho-ho, doctor. You can hang a star on that, baby.